So we're going to take a look at how to run an autoclave and how to prepare surgical tools for the autoclave. In a doctor's office, there are a variety of tools that need to be used for non-sterile procedures and for sterile procedures. There are certain ways that we must prepare these tools before they can be used in the office. And, of course, after they're used, we're going to be cleaning them again before we can be putting them through the autoclave. Now, before we get started with doing the autoclave, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we have all the necessary supplies. Of course, we're going to need the surgical tools. And before we can wrap the surgical tools, they need to have been sanitized with a disinfectant and rinsed and then dried off. They must be completely dry before going into the autoclave because we can't get any of the paper wet and we cannot be introducing any excess moisture um, to the autoclave. So um, once we have our surgical tools ready, the other supplies that we're going to need is autoclave paper and a lot of times it's just this blue paper. Sometimes people refer to it as CSR. Um, and other things that we can use that some offices prefer are pouches. And they come in a variety of sizes. They're very handy to use. And as you'll see later when we do wrapping, this is a lot easier option. These are a little bit more expensive, um, but what's also nice about it is you can actually view the surgical tools once they've been, uh, after they've been autoclaved, where we cannot view the tools after they've been wrapped. There are also um, a variety of pouches available. So some come already pre-made with a size, others come in a roll where then we can customize the size that we need and we cut it and use tape um, to secure the ends when we're done. So I'll be showing you how to wrap tools first and then we'll look at, at how to put instruments into a pouch. Okay, so to get started with wrapping, this is a little bit more complex surgical set, but it's a nice demonstration of how to wrap a surgical set. So, for all of our tools that have hinges, we need to make sure that they're all open. The reason why we want to make sure that we put something in place here to keep all these hinges open is because we want the tools to be open so that all the surfaces are going to um, be exposed to the incredibly hot air um, that will be um, created by the autoclave. In the case of instruments like this um, vaginal speculum, it's also called a grave speculum due to the shape, we want to make sure that all of these clamps are open. As you can see, they can be tightened down and shut completely. So we want to make sure that they're open and loose. Also here, we want to make sure that this is also open and loose so that the whole instrument is moving freely. We know that all the surfaces are then open to the air. We want to make sure whenever we're putting together a package that we're putting it in an order or in a fashion that works well with the um, practitioner and how they would use the set. For the tools to assemble a vaginal pack, and this will vary from office to office, I put the speculum at the bottom, I put the sound on the bottom, I put the tenaculum next with the cotton, I have the uterine forcep next, and then the towel forcep or ring forcep, and then I place the cup. The last item in the kit is an indicator, and what it will do is it's going to tell us that the temperature inside of our kit that we made got to the proper temperature that we need for this, these tools to be sterile. So we want to make sure that we put one inside. Okay. When we're folding them, it will be based on the size paper that we have and the tools that we're folding. The general idea is that we want to make a kit that it can be easily opened by the physician without compromising the sterile nature of the tools. So we make these little lips so that someone can go and grab it and pull it in that fashion without ever touching the inside of the kit. I like to get rid of some of the excess paper by folding it up like that and then coming over I 
I tend to use my full forearm to be able to secure my paper as I'm rolling because we do not put any tape on the inside. And then fold that down. Now we will do the second layer. So it'll be the same idea in that we want to make lips in the paper so that we're not touching the inside of the wrapping. Folding over again. Getting some of the excess paper folded up inside. And then folding it down. Our end product does not need very much tape to keep it closed. It is tight, but not too tight. Um, it allows for airflow with inside the package, but keeps everything well bundled. The tape we're going to use to close up our pack is very specific tape. This is autoclave tape. It can handle the temperatures that we're going to put it through in the autoclave, and it also has an indicator built in onto the tape. I usually like to make a little fold at the end of the longer piece of tape so that it's easy to open. After this tape has gone through the autoclave, it will develop black stripes along the outside of it if the autoclave reached the pop proper temperature. This way we know that the outer part of, of this package reached the proper temperature and our indicator strip on the inside tells us that it also got that hot on the inside as well. Before we put it into an autoclave, we want to make sure that it's always labeled. In our office, we use an abbreviation for all the contents of what is inside of this wrapped object, and we call it a badge pack. So for our office, we know that it contains this particular set of instruments. Other offices, you may list every object that's found inside of this, ob of this wrapping. So that's what we firstly need to have on there, It's so what surgical instrument. Next. We need to include the date that we're going to be autoclaving it, and we need to include our initials to allow people to know that we were the one that put this together, just in case later if any changes needs to, needs to be done to the procedure, we can do that. 